Hello, Squirrel Chibe. Listen, I wish I had some good news to bring to you today, but what we need to talk about is actually slightly terrifying um, to a lot of people. Let me explain. As a mother of a daughter, it doesn't really truly affect me right now. It could in the future, but right now what has transpired will definitely affect everybody out there who is a parent or a caregiver of a son, especially a son between the ages of 18 and 26. Really, any son under the age of 26 should be uh, knowledgeable of what has just happened. The House of Representatives has uh, passed a bill which will automatically register men 18 through 26 for the draft. Now, the reason this is a big deal is because before this was passed, men at the age of 18 were required to go and register register and put their names on the list for uh, selective services so that if there were a draft, they would already be in the system and they could be called up for action. Basically, it's a felony at, the, at this time. It was a felony if you did not go in and register for selective services. Now, the House of Representatives has passed a bill that makes it automatic. So at 18, you don't have to go in and, and put your name on, in, on, in the system anymore. You don't have to fill out the card, the paperwork. It will automatically be done for you. They have taken the option out of your hands. You will automatically be entered into the draft if you are a male between 18 and 26. And it's not just citizens, it's also immigrants, which is very interesting to me given everything that's happening in our southern border. It doesn't say illegal immigrants, but it does say immigrants. So who knows exactly how this is going to work, but they are automatically enrolling any registering, this is the word, automatically registering men between 18 and 26 for the draft. So for those of you who don't know, Selective Services, I looked it up because uh, again, as the mother of a daughter, it's not something that had really been in my mind previously because it wasn't something that affected my family. And that may sound selfish, but if you don't have sons, it's not something you generally think about. Well, now with the fact that they're automatically enrolling these young men into the selective service, my, my thought is, well, women are probably next. You know, at some point they're gonna start enrolling women also are requiring them to enter the draft because there's not going to be enough males 18 to 26 to fill positions if they do have a draft. They're going to start enrolling women as well and therefore it will affect me and my family because I do have a daughter who is currently 14 and what happens in the next four years or the four years after that or the four years after that she could be on the chopping block right. So I looked it up selective services the selective services system it's an independent agency of the United States government that collects and maintains information on men who may be subject to military conscription in the event of a national emergency. The SSS's goal is to ensure that a future draft is fair and equitable. So again, if you're a male, they throw your name in automatically now at 18 instead of you having to go and register. Now, it says here they do require U.S. citizens and male immigrants between the ages of 18 and 25 to register with the agency. Again, you no longer have to go register. They're doing it for you. They are taking that out of your hands and automatically doing it. Um, according to this, uh, failure to register with the SSS is a federal felony that can result in fines or prison time. Additionally, people who don't register may not be eligible for federal jobs, citizenship, or state funded financial aid. The citizenship is the one that got me when it said immigrants and then citizenship. So again, if you're crossing this, the Southern border or coming into this country as an immigrant, you are now, if they've got your name or whatever else, you're now being added into the system. And if you don't go fight, you won't get citizenship. So for people who are here seeking asylum, it affects them as well. But also my brain is going, well, how many people are gonna be added into this who would love nothing more than to Trojan horse be added into the draft and go over or start a fight or do whatever and turn on us. You know, it's a, it's a thought that of course is going to enter most people's minds, not just mine, but a lot of you, if you're here on this channel, you think the way I do and you've probably already thought of that yourself. So, um, I wanted to, I was looking more stuff up and it says here that student-based loans and grant programs in 31 states will be denied if, if they weren't registering ahead of time. So again, instead of giving the men and their families the ability to register or to not register and just say, you know what, screw it. I'll pay the fine. I'll possibly have prison time. I don't want your student loans. I don't want your grant programs in these 31 states. I'm not putting my name in this. I'm not fighting for a country that is, you know, doing everything it can to cripple its citizens at this point. That's been taken out of your hands. You no longer have that choice. The choice is now completely gone. You will automatically be registered. And that means that if you are called up for a draft and you don't go, 
even worse things can happen to you, right? So according to this, the House of Representatives passed a measure on Friday, yesterday, automatically registering men aged 18 to 26 for selective service. It was part of the annual National Defense Authorization Act, the NDAA, which sets out the U.S. government's military and national security priorities over the next fiscal year. Here is what I find really interesting. They have authorized $895.2 billion in military spending, which is a $9 billion increase from fiscal 2024. What that says to me is they are expecting something, or it's because we keep giving all of our money to Ukraine and now Israel and other places, and they need to add more money in to continue giving away to other countries. But you know, you've got you know Russian submarines off the coast of Florida that were supposed to be Cuba, and then they're 30 miles off the coast of Florida. You have things popping off all over this world. So they're probably thinking, you know, now that they're making this automatic, that says to me that they are expecting to need men between the ages of 18 to 26 to fight something in the next few years, which again, in and of itself is absolutely terrifying that we as a country are heading into all these different wars that we have no say on. The only ones who have a say are the ones sitting up in Washington, you know, making all the choices for everybody else in this country. Now, while it hasn't been invoked in over half a century, it's mandatory for all male U.S. citizens to register for the Selective Service, also known as the Military Draft, when they turn 18. Failure to register, as we have already said, is classified as a felony and comes with a host of legal challenges. Now, according to this article here from Fox News, supporters of the amendment argue that it would cut down on bureaucratic red tape and help U.S. citizens avoid unnecessary legal issues, as well as cutting down on the taxpayer dollars going toward prosecuting those, those cases. So they're trying to make it sound like by automatically enrolling your sons, your nephews, your friends, your whatever into this draft, that it's helping you. Your taxpayer dollars can go towards something else. Some other money laundering scheme that the government will come up with so that the money stays in their pockets and doesn't actually do anything it's supposed to do for the citizens of this great country, like fixing the roads, fixing the bridges, fixing the rail lines, fixing things like that, right? Now, according to this, it, this whole thing was led by Representative Chrissy Houlihan, who is a Democrat out of Pennsylvania, and it was passed in the uh, House Armed Services Committee's version of the NDAA in May. The NDAA advanced through the committee in the overwhelming 57 to 1 vote. By using, this is a quote, by using available federal databases, the Selective Service Agency will be able to register all of the individuals required and thus help ensure that any future military draft is fair and equitable. Again, this is according to Houlihan, who said uh, that was her quote in a debate last month. This will also allow us to rededicate resources. Basically, that means that money towards reading readiness and towards mobilization rather than towards education and advertising campaigns driven to register people. So what they're saying is they're using this as a, a, a way to say we don't need the recruitment offices. We don't need the, the men and women who are going out to the high schools and trying to recruit people. Screw all that. We're throwing your name in the hat no matter what. We don't need the recruiting people anymore. We can focus on mobilization, which again is a terrifying word when you stop and think about exactly what this really truly means. They are focusing on mobilizing. They are focusing on spending more $9 billion more towards everything that's going on. They are automatically putting your name into this hat. If you're between the ages of 18 and 26, you're automatically in there for the draft. And if whether you're an immigrant or whether you're a citizen, doesn't matter. You're all going in as long as you were born with a penis. That's pretty much what this means. Um, Let's see, the NDAA also included the largest ever military pay raise in history with a 19.5% increase for junior enlisted troops and a 4.5% increase for others. Now that's great that there is a pay increase. That is amazing. Maybe some of that $9 billion is going towards that. For the people fighting for our country who were not making, you know, barely anything and leaving behind families to take care of, this is great for them. Okay, so at least there is a positive, a silver lining. It also included funding for two new Virginia class submarines. Huh. I wonder if, again, if this has anything to do with the, you know, Russian submarines off the coast of Florida. Uh, Virginia class submarines and the establishment of a drone force within the U.S. Army, among other provisions. It's always those among other provisions. Those are the things that are very concerning to me. What are these other provisions? Again, is it so that we're going to end up spending more money on nuclear power? Is it because we're going to spend more money trying to help Ukraine or Israel or any of these other places? Is it because they're going to spend money on um, ways to lock down us? I'm just always curious what other provisions could possibly stand for. 
Again, the NDAA passed the House in a 217 to 199 vote, but it's unlikely to be taken up by the Senate. Now, according to this, um, Senator uh, Majority Leader Chuck Schumer blasted the bill on Friday afternoon over the inclusion of amendments curbing funding for abortion, transgender medical care, and diversity efforts. Unsurprisingly, the legislation coming out of the House today is loaded with anti-LGBTQ, anti-choice, anti-environment, and other divisive amendments guaranteed not to pass the Senate. Now, I hear what he says, but I feel like there's probably more and more people who are more likely to say yes to all of this because it makes it easier in the long run and puts more money back into the country. That's, that's what I'm thinking. It, it, it's not going to, the, you know, the Senate may be like, eh, I don't like it, but I can guarantee you this is going to be an issue that we have to worry about because think about it this way. If what happens in November and we have a Republican back at the helm, it's also possible that this could still fully transpire in in November, right? You just, this is something you need to be aware of. Again, if you have sons, if you are a caregiver of a young man in this age group, it is something to be on the lookout for and to be aware of. And for me and, and women and caregivers like me who have daughters just know that it, it's not too long before they pull the women into the whole thing as well, into the draft. So just something to think about, pay attention to, understand what's going on within a country because of everything that's going on outside of our country and know that these kind of things will affect everybody at the end of the day. So that's it for that. I have more coming later, but I wanted to bring this to your attention because it did just uh, happen yesterday and we like to talk about things as soon as they happen as long as when possible, right? Haven't had my tea, haven't had foods, so and my brain is half braining so far this morning, but it's better than nothing. Uh, Squirrel Tribe, I love y'all immensely. I would love your thoughts on this, especially the men in, in the audience. Audience? I don't know. I don't like that word. It sounds like a TV show. Um, the men who are watching, <laughs> I would like your thoughts on this and the, the caregivers and mothers and fathers of young men. I would love your thoughts on this as well. Open communication in the comment section is always the best. It helps the community immensely. So I love you guys and I will see you on the next one. Bye.